Hello with lesson 22. Um, we're going to talk about congruence criteria for triangles. And this right here stands for side, angle, side. Okay, first of all, um, answer the following question and discuss your answer with a partner. I understand you're not going to discuss your answer with a partner or your dog, or your cats, or your mom or dad. But just think about it for a second. Uh, do you think it is possible to know whether there is a rigid motion that takes one triangle to another without actually showing the particular rigid motion? Why or why not? So do you think it's possible whether to know whether there is rigid motion that um, takes one triangle onto another without actually showing the rigid motion? Um, Okay, everyone's going to think differently. We're going to prove to you a certain way uh, during this lesson. Um, some of you may think it's not possible um, because it's necessary, necessary to show each transformation as proof. Um, other, others of you may think it is just by looking at the triangles really, really carefully. So let's get into it. So um, it is true that we do not need to show the rigid motion to be able to know that there is one. We are going to show that there are criteria that refer to a few parts of the two triangles and a correspondence between them that guarantee congruency, that guarantee the existence of rigid motion. We start with the side angle side criteria. Okay, this is what we're doing today. Um, Side angle side congruence criteria, we're just going to call it the side angle side theorem or the side angle side rule. Um, so basically, given two triangles, ABC and A prime B prime C prime, we know that AB is equal to A prime B prime, which is one of the sides. The measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle A prime, which is our angle, and AC is equal to A prime C prime, side. Please note that we went side, then angle, and then side on purpose, okay? We did that in the order, side, angle, side, with the angle in between, it's called included on purpose, okay? The steps below show the most general case for determining a congruence between two triangles that satisfy the SAS criteria. Note that not all steps are needed for every pair of triangles. For example, sometimes the triangles are already, they already share a vertex. Sometimes a reflection is needed, sometimes not. It is important to understand that we can always use some or all of the steps below to determine a congruence between the two triangles that satisfy the SAS criteria. So let's look at our proof. So we provided two distinct triangles below. And we are going to assume that AB is equal to A prime B prime. And it's marked here with a single tick mark. Measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle A prime. Okay, we have a single arc. And AC is equal to A prime B prime. AC is equal to A prime B prime. Okay, those are all the givens. Okay, by our definition of congruence, we have to find a composition of rigid motions that maps triangle A prime B prime C prime onto triangle ABC. We must find a congruence F so that triangle A prime B prime C prime equals triangle ABC. First, let's use the, tri let's use the translation T to map to a common vertex. Okay. Which two points determine the appropriate vector? It's already drawn here for us. We could go from, um, we're picking A prime and A because they're the vertexes that are congruent. So that would be the appropriate vector, connecting those two vertexes right there. Um, can any other pair of points be used? Why or why not? I would say no. Okay, we used A and A prime 
because they are congruent. It was given to us at the first statement of the problem. State the vector in the picture below that can be used to translate triangle A prime B prime C prime. We're going to call it vector A prime A because we went from A prime to A. Using a dotted line, draw an intermediate position of triangle ABC as it moves along the vector. Let's see, it's going to be, I'm going to erase that vector first. Doing my best. Okay, so I moved that triangle along the vector. After the translation below, a uh, translation from A prime to A of triangle A prime B prime C prime shares one vertex with triangle ABC, A. In fact, we can say that the translation of triangle A prime B prime C prime equals triangle A B, let's just say double prime, C double prime, because we moved it so it's a little bit different. But the A's are the same because they share a vertex. Cool? Next, use a clockwise rotation of angle CAC, sorry, CAC prime, to bring side AC double prime to AC. Okay, rewind. I said that a little bit incorrectly. Next, use a clockwise rotation, so a rotation about the angle CAC double prime, to bring the side AC double prime to AC, or a counterclockwise rotation to bring AB double prime to AB. So we could either bring this one over to meet that, or bring this one over to meet that. So if I were to try to sketch it, Okay, C is going to C, double prime is going to C, so that this side is going to be shared. Okay, that would be a single tick mark. Let's look at it. All right, a rotation of appropriate measure maps segment AC double prime to segment AC. Sorry, those are vectors. Um, but how can we be sure that vertex C double prime maps to C? Recall that part of our assumption is that the lengths of the sides in question are equal. Okay, when in transformations, uh, rigid motion, our lengths don't change. Ensuring that the rotation maps to maps C double prime to C. Um, AC equals AC double prime. The translation performed is a rigid motion and therefore did not alter the length when AC prime became AC double prime. Okay, so we're now sharing a side. After the rotation about angle CAC double prime, triangle A, B double prime, C double prime, a total of two vertices are shared with triangle ABC, A and C. Therefore, let's write what's going on. I have the rotation about angle CAC double prime of, that's double prime, triangle AB double prime, C double prime equals triangle A B triple prime C. So we're going back to C. Oh, we're not there yet. We're here. So we have B triple prime and A. So triangle A, B, C is mapped onto A triple, B triple prime C. Finally, if B triple prime and B are on opposite sides of the line that joins AC, the reflection along AC brings B triple prime to the same side as B. 
So this reflection brings it over and we can see that they're congruent. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can move this down. Yep. Um, since a reflection is a rigid motion and it preserves angle measures, we know that the measure of angle BAC, which is right here, B, sorry, B triple prime AC, um, is equal to the measure of BAC. And so AB triple prime maps onto AB. However, if, however, AB triple prime coincides with AB, we can be certain that B triple prime actually maps can we be certain that B triple prime actually maps to B? We can, because not only are we certain the rays coincide, but also by our assumption that AB equals AB triple prime. Our assumption began as AB equals A prime B prime, but the translation and the rotation have preserved the length now as AB triple prime. Taken together, these two pieces of information ensure that the reflection over AC Reflecting over here brings B triple prime to B. Phew. Another way to visually confirm this is to draw the marks on the perpendicular bisector construction for AC. Um, the marks of the perpendicular bisector construction for AC. Write the transformations used to correctly notate the congruence, the composition of transformations that take triangle A prime B prime C prime to triangle A B C. So first we went um, a translation. Then we did a rotation around that angle. And finally we did a reflection. So H, remember we go from the outside in, G, F of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime equals triangle, oops, A, B, C. So here we've said F is our translation, G is our rotation, and H is our reflection. Awesome, we have now shown a sequence of rigid motions that takes triangle A prime B prime C prime to triangle ABC with the use of just three criteria from each triangle. The two sides and an included angle. Okay, remember I've told you that's important. The sides with the included angle between them. Given any two distinct triangles, we could perform a similar proof. There is another situation when the triangles are not distinct, where a modified proof is needed to show that the triangles map onto each other. Examine these below. Note that when using the side angle side triangle congruence criteria as a reason and a proof, you need only to state the congruence and side angle side. Okay? It'll be easy just using that criteria. Let's go. So, our first case. Um, when you have a shared side, the, transform, the transformation needed is a reflection. So we've got the shared sides. Shared vertex. Criteria needed is the rotation and then the reflection. Okay, let's try one on our own. So given triangles with a pair of corresponding sides of equal length and a pair of included angles of equal measure, sketch and label three phases of the sequence of rigid motions that prove the two triangles to be congruent. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to connect those vertices. Ugh. And that is our translation. Okay, then my um, cutting and pasting skills. Let's see if I can do it. 
Okay, the next one is rotation. And the last one, I'm not going to try and cut paste again. Um, that was bad. I probably should try to cut and paste again. <clears throat> where my shared vertex is up there, my side, and my side. And this would be the reflection. Okay. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Justify whether the triangles meet the SAS congruence criteria. Explicitly say, state which pairs of sides or angles are congruent and why. If the triangles do meet the SAS congruence criteria, describe the rigid motions that would map one triangle onto another. So this first one, given triangle LNM is equal to the, sorry, the measure of, goodness, rewind. Given the measure of angle LNM is equal to the measure of angle LNO, MN is equal to ON, do triangle LNM and triangle LNO meet the SAS criteria? Um, criteria. So let's write down what's given. Okay, these are back to proofs. Measure of angle LNM is equal to the measure of angle LNO. That was given. Yes, you have to state what's given. <clears throat> we also know that MN is equal to ON, and that is also given. And then LN is equal to LN. And that is because of the reflexive property of equality. Basically, if um, two lines are shared between two triangles, you can say they're congruent because of the reflexive property of equality. And we're done. We just did side angle side. So L and M is equal to congruent to triangle L and O because of SAS. I have side included angle side is equal to side included angle side. Note that it is very important that you name the triangles in the right order. Okay, um, L, you start with L in one triangle and go down to N and then M. We did L and M, then you start at L, go down to N and O. Okay, they have to be in the right order or you get it wrong. I was gonna erase that, it looks like I can't. Nope. All right, so remember to name them in the correct order. Given measure of angle HGI is equal to the measure of angle GI, sorry, JIG, um, that's a given. And then we know that HG is equal to JI. This is given. This is given. It's already marked there too. Um, HG is equal to JI. And the measure of the angles are congruent. Those are both given. We can also say when two triangles share a side, there um, the sides are congruent. We can say GI is equal to um, IG because of that reflexive property again. Therefore, triangle HGI, I went HGI, is equal to JIG. Because of SAS. Last example, is it true that we could also have proved triangle um, HGI and triangle JIG meet the SAS criteria if we had been given that angle HGI is congruent to angle JIG. Hold on a second. Um, if we had known that angle HGI, HGI, we just did that. 
if we had been given that HGI is congruent to JIG and HG is congruent to JI. That's what we were given. Is it true that we could also have proved that triangle HGI, HGI is congruent to JIG with the SAS, con con SAS criteria if we had been given that angle HGI is congruent to angle JIG and HG is congruent to JI? Um, yes. Whenever angles are equal, oh, that's the difference. They can also be also be described as congruent. So in the first example, the measures were equal, and now we're saying they're congruent. Well, that's true. Um, if measures are equal, the shapes are congruent, so it's interchangeable back and forth, which is pretty cool. Okay, in closing, um, we've talked about two triangles. Um, let's see, A, B, C, A prime, B prime, C prime. We can say that these two triangles are congruent when AB equals A prime B prime and the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle A prime and then AC equals A prime C prime. We've done side angle side um, and that tells us that the triangles are indeed congruent.